Maybe it makes sense to say the Hirsch of reasons, construction, or depiction is the stuff of fiction, but civilization. Yes, everything beautiful in your life comes from humanity invention and perception. It's impossible to talk about such things apart from human will. But what about returning to a natural state? A resort hotel located in a park is different from a cave dwelling. One is a story a thousand times more complex than the other. Civilization has always made exist that which was only imaginary. Humans have created everything they have. It's allowed them to make this. That too is a narrative. You mean the heritage of civilization, right? From heroic legends to words on a chalkboard to data in electronic memory, all narratives creating its own story. People enjoy stories, learn from stories, and use stories to unite those that are different. Humans are animals of narratives, and narratives are how humanity can reshape the world. Past scholars have referred to narratives as reason, as the one that creates. This is why you're called the Hersher of Reason. As it happens, as the third Hersher of Reason, Brown's path is also filled with inherited narrative. But if this is what these narratives emphasize, then what about Project Stigma? Project Stigma is the narrative about narratives, created by a story to govern all stories. As the other doctor likes to put it, it is the absolute idea of self-existence, conceptual infinity. I see it as a reaction to civilization's upward spiral, resulting from narratives existing on their own, apart from themselves. You mean the story separates from the storyteller and begins to tell its own story? Yes, this happened since humanity's beginning, but most don't know this. As I said, Doctor May and I both think whether it's a heroic epic or a computer program, there are all these type of narratives, all a story. In computers, programs and data are the same. It seems the human mind itself, the giant woven web of neurons. It's also a narrative constituting a story unique to each person, their self, their true self. In the sense, civilization is originally stories told by stories, a huge web formed by ideas with individual units we call people. According to you, the story units serving as the building blocks of civilization are people who are independent, free, and able to give meaning to themselves. And Project Stigma is a deconstructed, reorganized unit and can exist in any form as long as it still supports civilization. That's it. For humanity and civilization, this is how they graduate from childhood. From childhood, this has happened many times in history, hasn't it? Whether it's your history or our history, the meaning that has been woven by humanity acts on humanity itself all the time. There are always those that live and die for faith and for money. These things deciding who lives and dies. Humanity made them. These decisions determine the future, whether it's money or 
Society has gone from idolatry to contracts, and industry from self-efficiency to supply and demand, all detached from the individual. The main point is one's brand isn't the individual, but the word brand. Doctor May's thoughts are more important than her existence. Who the herder of reason is is not as important as her fighting for humanity, and for the third herder of reason. It becomes even more obvious. If it was Joyce or Young, they'd be just as bothered and wanting to fight back as you are, right, Bronya? Don't get me wrong. I have no bias here. As I see it, natural humanity and fictional stories are two sides of the world's destiny. Humans control stories. Stories control humans. This is a delicate balance that allows civilization to flourish. But with Hankai, fiction wages war against reality. The balance is broken, and humanity and stories must find their place once more. Herscher and Project Stigma are at two ends. One, an independent narrative from free from civilization. One, a universal story that needn't be narrated. Of course, the conflict isn't irreconcilable. You're talking about the Herscher of humans. Yes, such Herschers belong to civilization, to those that need to create fiction. If they can overcome finality. Then this is the best answer the paradoxical Hankai has to offer. And Project Stigma? As Doctor May said, Project Stigma is the standard answer. Standard? In the sense of finality? More than that, standard means worst. Is that not the human way of thinking? Stories offer wonderful pictures for human civilization, but this isn't usually true for individual experiences. Early farmers were worse off than hunters. Early workers worse than farmers. Though there would be no standard for civilization without them. But there's no narrative where they are rewarded for their efforts. Some narratives even tell them they deserve to suffer. This is humanity's standard narrative. People's lives driven by imagined purposes in exchange for progress, consciously or unconsciously. It lets fiction grow wild. History has shown letting go can help liberate people from the shackles of the previous narrative. But the price for liberation is very high. Setting mountains of lies, countless deaths in war, Project Stigma, which deconstructs humanity. If you view humanity as a whole, they choose the worst answer, generation after generation, denying reality with fiction. But the Herscher of Reason spirit is inheriting reality. The Herscher of Reason's power is the key to fighting Project Sigma. If we stop at fiction, we already have our conclusion. But we're talking about reality. A more careful look is needed.
一些更微观的分析，或许才是真正重要的环节。But we've been standing here for a while. For the sake of operational efficiency, how about we have a walk? Brania doesn't care, but maybe Kiana is tired of standing. Haha, <laughs> I'm not that impatient. But Prometheus, when you say take a walk, does that include the memories from before? Of course, your previous strategy was correct, just inefficient, and I know just how to optimize it. I heard from her. Brania, as the Hirsch of Reason, you have a distributed core that can be divided up to 300,000 times. Could it be true? Right. Mr. Yang said they were survivors of the Hankai eruption in Berlin, the remnant of the city that had been annihilated. It's no wonder the space before you is the way it is. Two minutes and eleven seconds. Even though this body doesn't match your original strategy at all, you managed to retain your fierceness. Compared to forced compliments, I'd rather hear insults. I didn't know you were into that. The other one would be better suited to working with you. I'm bad at bad jokes. Huh? Didn't he see he doesn't know Mr. Robo well? What? Are you puzzled about why you're seeing me instead of him here? It can't be helped. I'm not good at everything, and he never learned how to get along with children. It's just a shift change. Yes, but I'm already regretting it. Good thing it's only temporary. The real difficulty is yet to come. In short, this isn't just reciprocity, but the general trend.
The name Great Serpent will appear less and less in the sanctuary. Because I, or should I say we, have never been so short-handed. There he goes again. Why don't you just say you're going to sit back? Why throw so many riddles at us? Huh? As you can see. Asking Mr. Robo to take up arms again is the only thing I can do. If you want to fight with him, I'm sure he won't refuse. This has gone on long enough. Can't you keep the children out of it? It's all right. I stay behind to help New Adra out. I know this sounds strange, but unlike the people at the sanctuary, fighting is my forte. Besides, it's possibly related to the master terminal's malfunction. According to the scope given by Klein, this can be solved by a single person. So I'm asking Mr. Robo for help. I told you they're not babies anymore. Times have changed. When I was your age, the bravest thing I did was cutting school. Then let's split up, eradicate the monsters wandering around the sanctuary, and meet back here. But don't push yourselves too hard. For Project Stigma, the most easily deconstructed Herscher of this era is the Herscher of Reason, who poses a serious threat. And Hare needn't be involved. She just needs to lay bare your shortcomings to Project Stigma. And the final step of all this is our fight with Kevin. The battle depleted the Hersha of Reason's already unstable power, causing it to be torn apart by Project Stigma in a higher dimension. Remaining fixed points are channeled into this tiny bubble universe that was born as a result of finality, and in turn traps you inside. Hare's vision of Project Stigma is to use Dreamland to connect consciousness as a vessel for a purely fictional civilization. Compared to the birth of the Hirsch of Reason, does it seem familiar? You mean, while Joyce, he, if one were to say Project Stigma would create God's Adam, then your first Hirsch of Reason is undoubtedly humanity's Adam. It's strange to hear you talk about someone you don't know like that. But one thing is correct. Before the Hankai outbreak in Berlin, the consciousness known as Well Joyce did not exist on this earth. 
The Hersher, born from nothing, began collecting the thoughts of other sacrificial victims because he was influenced by a victim's thoughts. And the thoughts grew. The Hersher core grew more complete. No one knew for sure what he had done, but they knew the countless thoughts, the cries of a destroyed city, was a call for a savior, their last stand against Hankai. And the man known as Well Joyce rose from the ruins. He knew beneath his feet were only ashes, and he was relentless. He wanted to be the savior they cried for. He desperately pieced together the fragmented thoughts. He wouldn't call their names. He didn't know what they were going through. He knew it was mostly pointless. But he tried to preserve their dignity, and that dignity seemed to bring about a miracle. A butterfly fell on the tip of his finger, and he fixed his broken wings. The child of the world fell into a deep sleep, and at that time he didn't even awaken the Hersher powers. Right. For our era, that's the real miracle. Is there anything wrong with the analogy, Adam of humanity? In paying him tribute, no, but. Whether you call him Adam or Savior, both are too narrow a term. In his short life, he met all sorts of companions that convinced him his power instead came from the ordinary. He saw himself as an ordinary child of the world. It was for that that he sacrificed himself to protect others from a tyrant. He believes that even if his consciousness was gone, the power of the Hirsch of Reason would pass on from one ordinary person to another. We don't need a savior; we can save ourselves. Perhaps he was born a savior, but his beliefs went beyond that. The Hirsch is an apostle for Hankai, but can be a warrior for humanity. No demon or angels, just ordinary people. Thank you. That gives me a full understanding of what Hersher of Reason really means in this era. But what if the three hundred thousand thoughts stood in your way of re rescuing the world? What would you do, Third Hersher of Reason? Get in the way of rescuing the world? Painful, I know, but the Hersher of Reason's power is unstable and vulnerable to Project Stigma. That's the truth before us. To one person, three hundred thousand thoughts seem like a lot, but to Project Stigma seven billion, it's just a number. I don't mean to trivialize history, but this is the difficulty the Hirsch of Reason will face with Project Stigma. My attempt to separate and bring you all together shows the Hirsch of Reason's power is broken. Nothing to Project Stigma.
不小心的。舰长要带希儿去哪儿？希儿，收到。舰长要带希儿去哪儿？舰长要带希儿去哪儿？去哪儿？舰长要带希儿去哪儿？外面的世界很危险，希儿，会小心的。去哪儿？希儿，收到。舰长要带希儿去哪儿？外面的世界很危险。五行相生，分时化日，小心烫伤。决战的时刻到了，安息吧，拥抱你的力量吧